Now, because you're a clinical psychologist, that means you're very smart. I, I don't know if that's what it means, but... But you say <laughs> something like self-awareness. Yeah. Okay. For those out there, uh, what is the definition of self-awareness? I mean, who, who, who possesses good self-awareness? Well, hopefully, we all possess some self-awareness. But self-awareness in that context, I would say, is understanding why you do what you do. Triggers. Right. It, triggers are part of it, sure. But it's like self Like we all get up and have motivations throughout the day to do stuff. Some of it's productive and healthy. Some of it's not so much. But do you understand why you do what you do? That self-awareness helps you be in control of it. So you can you can do more of the good stuff and less of the bad stuff, if that makes sense. So if somebody was listening to this podcast and wanted to hone their self-awareness skills, are there things that we could be doing to help us better understand who we are? Because, I mean, that's the crazy thing is now I'm a 48 years old and I think I know myself really well. But you would ask me 10 years ago, I thought I knew myself, but I yeah. didn't. I really didn't. Yeah. I was I was believing the hype. I was believing the BS. I was I wasn't sure of who I wanted to be. I'm not still 100% sure of who I want to be. I just know who I don't want to be and I'm moving towards that direction. Yeah. Well, that's a great question. I mean, first of all, I would put a plug in just for general therapy, like going in and talking with a therapist occasionally, even if you don't feel like a lot, most people wait till they're in crisis yes. to go see a therapist. But if you were like, Hey, you know what? I want to know myself better. I want to have better self-awareness. I want to be more in control of my life. You could go in once a month and have a conversation with a therapist who can help you develop that insight. But a shortcut, no, <laughs> not, I, not, 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 not a, not we a call them life hacks, bro. Okay. Life hack, bro. Yeah. Uh, but not a substitution for good therapy, but here's an exercise that I sometimes ask people to do. Okay. And that is, it's an ABC journal. And this is what you do. And journaling sounds terrible. And I feel that even every time I say that word, because I hate journaling, I have a lot of guilt from being a kid and you're supposed to write in your journal. And I, uh, I never did, but this kind of journaling is easy to do. So you could say to yourself, all right, Every day when I go to bed, I'm going to get out the notes on my phone because I always have my phone with me. So I'm going to open up the notes on my phone. I'm going to think back on the day. I'm going to think, was there sort of a, a big, powerful experience I had today, positive or negative? You know, something that was kind of high emotion, sticks out in my mind. Mm -hmm. That's the B. A, B, C. Antecedent means what came before it. Ooh. B is the behavior. That's, that was my experience I'm remembering. And C is the consequence. What happened because of that? So most days are pretty average and those aren't going to be huge deals. But to you, they are. If you realize what happened before this experience I had, what was the experience like? I'll write that down. And then what came as a result of that experience? And if you did that every day for a couple of weeks, you would have so much information about yourself. You'd start to see patterns of triggers or situations or influences that cause you to do and experience what you experience. And then you'd also start to see right there on the page, the result of all your behavior. And sometimes that's exciting. And a lot of times it's kind of like, Ooh, mm. I, I got some changes to make, but the cool thing is, you know, what changes to make now, right? All right. So walk me through this. Cause uh, I had something happen like this yesterday, but it wasn't for me. It was my daughter. Okay. Okay. So Frankie uh, is trying out for the diets. Right, the Diets at Davis High School. Yeah, and my oldest daughter, who was a junior, decided not to do it because she wanted to do some different stuff her senior year, which okay. is okay, and we talked about because that. Because she's been a dancer- Her whole life. Until now. I didn't yeah. realize she's not doing it. No, she's not doing it. Okay. And so Frankie was trying out, and mm -hmm. this was a big deal at my house. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been practicing for weeks. Truth be told, she's been practicing her whole life. All she ever wanted to do was be a Diet because her sister was, and whatever her sister does, she wants to do. Okay. So me and my ex-wife are sitting outside of Davis High School. Uh, it's tryouts. So we're out there, and all of a sudden, Frankie comes running out, freaked out. She goes, Dad, I just bombed. I just bombed. And oh. she's talking to her mom. And she goes, I bombed. I blew the hip-hop. And hip-hop's my best, Dad. I can't believe I blew hip-hop. And she starts just freaking out, and, and, and almost like an anxiety attack. Oh, you yeah, know? yeah. And, and I go, hey. She's panicking. I was yeah. like, hey, it, it doesn't all come down to one dance. Maybe it does. I don't know. I was just trying to comfort her. Right. You know, and I was like, just take a deep breath. Don't let them see a sweat. Mm -hmm. Go back in there and just own it. Own who you are. And I think you're going to be okay. Yeah. So she goes, okay, Dad. She takes a deep breath, wipes the tears from her eyes, goes in. Hour later, I'm stuck in a car with my ex-wife. 
<laughs> and we had a pretty good time, but I, you know, we're, we're getting texts. So they didn't let you guys watch no, the tryouts. No, we couldn't watch. You had to so, wait. I'm, so I'm texting, you know, Frankie to see how it's going. She goes, I don't know, Dad. We're still waiting. I was like, I'm running out of things to talk to your mom about. Frankie's <laughs> like, maybe you should go to Wikipedia and find stuff you can talk to your ex-wife about. Frankie's a character, yeah. <laughs> and so we were laughing about that. And so then all of a sudden, she comes out, opens it up, gets the letter. She's an official diet. Oh, uh, yeah. Woo! So I wanted, and so, but during that, she was sending these texts like, I'm no good. I, yeah. I blew it. This is, I, I don't know what to do, you know? Yeah. And, and I was like, hey, you can't beat yourself up. You, 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 you know. Negative self talk. Negative self talk. And, yeah. I, and, and I was like, hey, we can't have that. You know, you, all you can do is go in and give it your best. Right. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But if you know you did it your best, mm-hmm. you can be proud. Yeah. And she made the team. And so, That's awesome. And, and, and I'm stoked, but I still want to go back and talk to her about this negative self-talk. Perfect. So so, so what often happens as parents is, you know, we're all, you know, we're on pins and needles about these sorts of things our kids do, and we want them to have good experiences. And when they do have a good experience, like she ultimately did, we tend to celebrate it, right? Way to go. Good job. You know, I saw the picture yeah. on, on Instagram. I got her a unicorn balloon. Unicorn balloon, right? Good. And yellow roses. I think that's a great dad move, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so we celebrate it and then we leave it. And the problem is there's no guarantee of learning from that. So these are called mastery experiences. If you want to know what causes a person to have high self-esteem, self-confidence as an adult, it's because they've had a hundreds and thousands of positive self uh, mastery experiences. And this is what it is. It's when you can take ownership of your role in a positive outcome. Mm-hmm. Instead of giving it away. So what you need to do now, this is your homework assignment. I'm going to do it. You need to go to her next time you have a chance to just chat with her as soon as you can next few days. Chat with her and say, that's so great. You made, you're a diet. It's, I'm so proud of you. It's, it's amazing. But what do you think you did in order to make that happen? Now, here's the kicker. If she gives you an externalizing answer... Something like, well, I got lucky. Everybody did well. The coaches were really good. Uh, I got lucky with the song selection. Any of that kind of stuff, she didn't really learn what we need her to learn. She didn't have a mastery experience. She doesn't, it's not going to be much different the next time she's in a similar situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the self talk's going to come back, that negative stuff. If she on her own or with a little bit of coaching from you can have some internalizing answers. It's good for her to be realistic and say, oh, you know, um, I did get a good song selection or, you know, my, my coach helped me prepare really well. But if she can own, like, I didn't give up dad. Like I was really bummed, but when I came out and talked to you, I, I went back in and I really did try my best. I didn't give up on any of the parts. When I made a mistake, I kept going. Anything that shows that she knows how she helped influence that positive outcome that she that's did the a, work then yeah that she owns it then that's a mastery experience okay like it now this is very different than being a narcissist somebody who's full of themselves they have unrealistic like ownership they they think they're the best one there and that they own everything and that they didn't need anybody's help that's not what we're after that's uncle rico he can throw the rico. ball over the mountain if i could just go go back <laughs> throw that ball over the mountain right so so if she can have an internalizing answer and if she doesn't you can say well you know that is awesome you got some a little bit of luck never hurt anybody but what did you do you need to keep kind of coaching her and then if she can't get it you need to say something to her like well i noticed that instead of coming and getting in the car and going home with us you dried your tears and you went back in do you think that had anything to do with it and so that's the sort of coaching a parent can do. So don't make that mistake, which we've all made. Don't just celebrate something good that your kid does. At some point, come back around and have that conversation with them. How did you make that happen? And then listen, is it externalizing or internalizing? And when you call that a mastery what? Mastery experience. Okay. And so it's, this is why. The 10,000 hours. Yeah. Well, that's practice, but yeah, you're owning it, I assume, if you're sticking with something that long. Yeah. But this is why a purple ribbon doesn't do anybody any good, yeah. right? Like we all grew up with like, oh, we get a lavender ribbon. And I think on this show, I've told my story of like in the 4-H club, which I shouldn't have been there anyway. <laughs> and then I got this lavender ribbon. I threw it in the trash because I, even at a young age, I knew that <clears throat> that didn't mean anything. Those things, celebrating, giving awards, those are fun. That's the fun part, but it doesn't build self-confidence, doesn't build self-esteem. That's where you can realistically say um, on the, what we want to train young kids to do is I, I did these things and 
it, it created this outcome. As you get a little more mature, you can also do the other end of the spectrum and you can say, when I met, I, I messed up because I did these things and yeah. I'm going to do it different next time. But we will wait till she's a little older on that. Okay. But like right now it's, it's important for kids. And you know what, if you're 50 years old and you're struggling with your self-confidence, you can do that for yourself. Now you can say, well, do I give away responsibility for my success? Do do I can I not own it? Do I have this unrealistic humility? Some people who grow up in really um, religious households sometimes have a hard time owning, and because they feel cocky instead of saying, "Oh, I give it all up to somebody else did it for me." It's yeah. like, no, no, no. What did you do? So I w- I hope you'll have that, and then you got to come back and tell us how. I'll Frankie, report back to you. That's yeah. why I love having a doctor as a co-host. I mean, he's wicked smart, guys. He really is wicked smart. Well, I don't know. You should put that on your business business card. Wicked smart. I should get a business card. Yeah, for there starters. you go. Yeah.